Among biker gangs and the larger Los Angeles criminal underworld, the Mongols MC are both revered and feared. Born on the turf of one of America's most infamous motorcycle clubs, the Hells Angels, this organization quickly carved itself a path to national attention because of the violence and ruthlessness that characterizes it. From its home base in Southern California, the gang eventually grew to encompass 14 national chapters and sister groups throughout the world. And yet, little contributed to shaping the Mongols' legend as much as the time the club crossed swords with La M, aka the Mexican Mafia. But how did such a small group find themselves in the crosshairs of one of the world's biggest criminal enterprises? And how did they manage to avoid getting annihilated in the process? Misfits from the beginning. Although the Mongols and the Mexican Mafia wouldn't cross paths until much later, the origins of their conflict can be traced back all the way to the MC's early days. By the end of the 1960s, a small group of Hispanic veterans who had just come back from Vietnam began entertaining the idea of joining a motorcycle club. Having been denied entry into Hell's Angels because of the group's strict white-only policies, the former soldiers decided to go a different way and form their own club instead. In December 1969, the Mongols Motorcycle Club was eventually founded in Montebello, California. Taking their name from the roaming horde of warriors that conquered most of Asia and Eastern Europe in the 13th century, the club adopted a three-piece patch with a Mongol warrior riding a motorcycle and claimed California as their home turf. From the very beginning, loyalty, honor, and respect were immediately considered as integral aspects of their existence. After its foundation, the newly formed group almost instantly started to grow. The veterans that made up its core quickly transformed what at first was a band of ragtag bikers into a disciplined, effective squad, almost a small army in behavior and nature. Requests to join skyrocketed, and in only a handful of years, the Mongols managed to spread far past their hometown in Southern California. By the end of the 1970s, the MC could count on the support of several chapters throughout California and had rightfully earned its place as a one percenter club. Prolonged Wars and Loose Alliances The sudden spurt of growth that the Mongols went through didn't, however, go unnoticed. While California's biggest MC, the Hells Angels had merely tolerated their activities up until this point. The Hispanic club's ability to quickly put up additional chapters and expand was now turning the group into a nuisance for them. On top of that, the fact that both groups now claimed California as their home base and that the Mongols had chosen to wear a California bottom rocker, something that the Hells Angels had exclusively had on up until that point, further created friction between the clubs. All-out war would follow soon afterwards. The conflict between the Mongols and the Hells Angels would soon highlight the importance of numbers. Almost immediately outnumbered, the Hispanic club turned to the MCs that had not sworn allegiance to the Hells Angels for help. A flimsy network of loose alliances was created with Mongols, outlaws, Vagos, and other clubs teaming up to keep the white supremacist group at bay. At the same time, the Mongols also began to boost recruitment efforts hoping that lowering standards and including people from diverse backgrounds could somehow help bolster their own numbers. The recruitment drives and the alliance brokering worked in the short term, helping the Mongols to survive for the most of the 1980s. By the early end of the decade, however, the situation rapidly took a turn for the worse. Criminals are seldom known for sticking to agreements and alliances, and changes in leadership shifting interests and new opportunities on both ends rocked the house of cards strongly enough to make it fall. With the network of alliances they worked so hard to create dissolving before them, leaders and decision makers within the various Mongols chapters soon faced a humiliating defeat. Warriors with two masters. 
As the 1990s rolled around and casualties further mounted, the Mongols were once again forced to lower their standards. Having nowhere else to go, the group began recruiting directly from both current and former street gangs throughout the Los Angeles area. Common street criminals, most of whom had never owned a Harley Davidson, something that Mongols' constitution insisted was a prerequisite to being admitted into the club, were welcomed with open arms and even inducted into positions of power. Among the others, this latest round of recruitment also brought in several Sorenos, Southern Californian criminals of Hispanic descent, who all paid tribute to the Mexican Mafia if they enter the U.S. prison system. In other words, this is where the Mongols' problem with La M first started. On top of several other rules, perhaps the most important one within the Mexican Mafia is that membership is a for-life kind of deal. Nobody that joins the organization is allowed to leave while they still breathe, and all members of La M who come across a dropout or traitor should do their best to kill them. Effectively, a group of warriors with two masters, these new recruits found themselves at a crossroads, renouncing their allegiance to the Mexican Mafia, risking persecutions and assault as a result, or sticking with their Sureño brothers. Rifts within the Mongols began to form, some of which would last well into the 21st century. The conflict escalates. As internal politics within the Mongols grew more intricate, the conflict between the Mexican Mafia and the club eventually spilled into an all-out war in January of 2004. While on a routine run to buy methamphetamine in bulk from a gang known as Basset Grande, several Mongols met up with their suppliers at a motel in Arcadia. Members of the Basset gang soon recognized one of the bikers as a former Mexican Mafia enforcer and following the organization's rules on dropouts, assaulted him as he was leaving the meeting place. Both the targeted Sereño and another Mongol who had stopped to fight were killed, sparking a series of retaliatory strikes that rocked the MC to its core. Over the following few weeks, Mongols were attacked at multiple locations, including a meth lab in Rosemead and motels throughout LA. By March 2004, the Mexican Mafia sent word that they wanted the Los Angeles MC to pay over $20,000 in damages and lost revenue from the busted drug deals. The Mongols, on the other hand, refused this extortion and made some threats of their own. Undeterred by their resistance, the Mexican Mafia eventually greenlit the motorcycle club and put out a hit on a Mongol tattoo shop in La Mirada. A Mafia hitman entered the building a few minutes before closing time and before he could return fire, killed the owner as well as a number of patrons. The hitman would eventually be identified and arrested, and La M A also put him to death to prevent him from turning into an informant. As news of the La Mirada hit spread, hundreds of Mongols began to fear for their lives. Scared that they could be the victim of the next Sureño attack, a number of them even turned in their cuts and patches and renounced their Mongol membership altogether. Unable to take on the Mafia by force, shot callers within the club opted for a more diplomatic approach and asked for a meeting. The Mexican Mafia accepted and the two parts soon met at the negotiations table. A flimsy ceasefire is brokered. While the words that were exchanged during the meeting would probably remain a secret forever, the Mongols' efforts eventually paid off. By the late 2000s, the two sides managed to set aside their differences and agreed to bury the hatchet. Some speculate that, among the other requests, members of La M A asked that Ruben Cavazos, the president of the Mongols MC and the mastermind behind the Sereño recruitment efforts, had to be killed to restore the status quo. Although Mongols decided not to kill their own president, as doing so would further tatter their already damaged reputation, Gavazos was eventually ousted from the organization in August 2008. In addition to that, the former Mongols leader was arrested alongside more than 35 other Mongols by the ATF a few months later. 
He has since pleaded guilty to a number of racketeering charges and was sentenced to 14 years in prison. Today, relations between the Mongols MC and the Mexican Mafia remain somewhat stable. The ceasefire brokered in 2008 still holds and the club was effectively removed from the Mafia's green light list. Things could change at a moment's notice, however, especially if the members of the motorcycle club step into Sereno territory, attack Sereno street gangs, or offend the Mexican Mafia in any other way.